also a date on it. Brick Lane, an area of London's shifting ethnic patterns, was one identified with poverty, slums and Jack the Reaper's crime scene. However, now it has become extremely popular with edginess and creativity, causing galleries, restaurants, markets and festivals emerge every year. September Saturday 26 was a great night for the serial killer cafe in Brick Lane as class war activists stormed the cafe in a protest against the perceived gentrification of the area. Starting as a peaceful protest with musicians and dancers performing, the demonstration became outrageous as violence hit in, causing property damage and terrorising customers and employees. Chris Lewis, a local from the area, gave his opinion on the subject. I think the biggest frustration for a local person was the fact that Shoreditch Station used to be Zone 2 and so it becomes a trendy area so it suddenly becomes Zone 1 so the prices go up and people are paying Zone 1 fares. So I can see where frustrations would come from because there's a lot of uh, poverty in the area. Um, whether it should have been focused on a cafe mm -hmm. that is ultimately a small business startup from two guys who are also you know, living in the area not making a huge amount of money but have had some initiative it was probably misguided they really hate capitalism, if they really hate the idea of progress, then they're probably in the wrong city. Um, but if they hate the idea of aggressive expansion, then they probably should have focused on something like Pret. However, why did class war activists turn this protest into violence? The lack of respect for private ownership or private initiative take any part in it? Lucas Michelionis, a contributor to The Telegraph and an international politics student, expressed his opinion. It's the idea that someone who's, who's who is creating business is sort of cheating the system for some reason because it's unfair because we earn a lot of money out of it, we make a lot of money out of it and so on. I think it is extremely damaging to actual, to actual communities which need better jobs, which need better opportunities rather than sticking, sticking to uh, big state solutions such as for example increasing welfare which what actually does uh, as the evidence shows just keeps pe people in poverty. Yes, we might have a home and, and so on, but it keeps people in poverty and we just stuck for generations, for quite a few generations until we break out of it. So it's extremely damaging. And the message I think should be, and if we really, uh, with their movement, the class war group uh, movement is all about lifting people out of poverty. They should be encouraging more gentrification, more wacky cafes, more quirky shops, we should be doing everything to make sure it's the best area to pursue pursue these kind of uh, uh, ventures. But what what we see now is, I think, the climate in this area. If we're going to keep doing these protests, the climate of this area is going to be that people will have a second thought about creating a new business, creating a new uh, maybe some sort of private initiative. So I think it's extremely damaging to this community. Most probably, class war activists will continue on trying to spread this movement. Only time will tell if they succeed.